Those are good shots, man. The most impressive budget carry gun I've ever reviewed, the Taurus GX4. Well, today we're gonna review its larger brother, the GX4 XL. This is the Toro version. And today I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about this gun, the pros and cons. I'm gonna take you to the range with me and just give you my overall first opinion of the XL here. Now, one thing I will say, they actually use the 11 round mags from the Taurus GX4. Not only that, they send you one of those, they also send you the plus two extensions here. So that's really nice, man, that, you know, if you, if you have a GX4, you have all these magazines, you don't have to go out and buy a bunch of stuff, right? Because you already have the 11 round flush magazines to go with your gun and then you got the plus two extensions. So you get two magazines there. They will send you one of these little uh, pinky adapters if you wanna put that on your flush magazine there, if that's something you want. It also has interchangeable palm swells. Most of your small guns still don't have this, so it's impressive that they actually send this out to you. You got a single pin, you drive that out. If you want a little bit more of a hump right there, then you can swap that out just like that. I left the medium one installed because I think it's perfect. If you look here, it's kind of thin right in this area, but it fills out nicely here. So in the palm of my hands, there's very little gaps or anything, and it points naturally for the most part, and it fills up my hand really well. I also send you another little mini GX4 right there. So two for the price of one. It's actually got a little takedown tool. I'll show you how that works here in a minute. And overall, if you think about the P365 and how they come out with the XL version and then the Spectra Comp, which is the same size as the XL, that's essentially what it is. It took the GX4, gave you a little bit longer barrel. One thing I like too is that the sizing they did of the gun is fairly consistent with the GX4, where this one is like 4.3 inches high and 18.5 ounces unloaded. This one, is 20 ounces unloaded and 4.4 inches high. So they got the sizing right. So even though you got a little bit longer barrel there and just a little bit more weight, that's pretty impressive considering it's a, you know, a little bit bigger gun, but they didn't add that much more weight on top of it. No spot for a rail on this version either, but we got front and rear slide serrations here. They're cut nicely into the slide. So you get a good bite right there. You have steel front and rear sights. The rear are blacked out. Front is a white dot. You have an alloy steel barrel. It's a, it's got a gas nitride finish. You got a stainless steel frame uh, and a stainless steel or a stainless alloy slide. So the materials are you know fairly high quality. One thing I've noticed over time is even with the GX4, I, I might get a little bit more slide wear with this gun, but it's not like a crazy amount, no kind of rust or anything like that. You can generally tell with these that the treatment is maybe a little bit cheaper than some of your other models, but it's still fairly high quality for what you get. This video and many others is because of direct support from our patron members and our channel members right here on YouTube. So if you like to support what we do and know that your support comes right back to you in the form of trusted gun reviews, then I'll leave two links down below, one to Patreon and one where you can join right here and never have to leave YouTube. Your support goes directly into the channel, whether it's guns for reviews, ammo, editing, camera, everything that goes into making these videos. Also check out some of the cool perks that y'all get as channel and patron members. If you don't want to do this or can't do that, totally understand. Enjoy the rest of the video. Big thanks to everybody here that supports what we do. Take down lever right here. You got their little RMP, which is basically just an indexing point right there, right? When you keep your finger off the trigger, that's where you're supposed to keep your finger, right? So a nice indexing point. One thing they still do that I'm not a fan of is they kind of tell you how they prefer you to carry 
which is a magazine loaded up on an empty chamber. But if, you know, the situation calls for it, it might be best to load around in the chamber. You know, if you're dropping off a bank deposit late at night, well, that may constitute you carrying with around in the chamber. But be careful because you could have issues upon initially chambering that round, especially if you're under stress. I'm like, dude, come on. I mean, all this is in the manual too, by the way. And I'm like, stop. I mean, you know, safely carry around in the chamber, right? Modern guns are designed for that. So if you're keeping your booger finger off the trigger until you're ready to fire, knowing what your target is and what's behind it, following the rules of safety, you should have no problems, especially if you have a good holster. Speaking of that, hopefully Tulsa will come out with one for the XL. I just got one for the regular GX4. So there's that. Really hate that they put that crap in the manual. <clears throat> to me, my opinion, it's bad advice. Here's your side stop right here. You can use that to drop it to. I generally don't, but you can. Loaded viewport. It is optics ready and it fits a variety of different optics straight from the factory. So you got like the Hex Wasp. You even have the uh, Sight Mark little mini shot. I got a little mini shot right there on the Canik. That's actually been a pretty decent budget option. The Shield RMSC, Sig Romeo, and it will fit the Trigicon RMR CC, but that one requires a separate plate. So you do have some mounting options there uh, straight from the factory, which is a good, obviously a good thing. Now you got 11 rounds there. I showed you compared to the Spectra Comp. You got 11 rounds in the Taurus. You got 12 rounds in the Spectra Comp. To me, they got the sizing pretty much perfect. Take something like the Reflex, 11 rounds, 11 rounds. That one's got the little extension on there too, so it's not totally fair, but you'll get the point, All right? So again, man, I, I like when companies do that, when they give you a really good capacity and they widen this area out in here, it's kind of a trade-off because the shorter the grip, typically the harder it may be to shoot, but if you have this area especially with an interchangeable palm swell and it fills up your hand good. And then of course you have an extended magazine that can further aid in that while you're shooting. That is the key to all of this, right? Not making it super long. I've talked about this like with the Glock 43X before, but finding that really nice balance between concealability and shootability and shootability is where this thing really shines. Those are good shots, man. That is an accurate gun. We have already taken some shots with this one. I did a short on this one and uh, it's it's accurate. And I have a tendency with this gun to ride that front sight a little bit higher than I should. Now, we did have some issues, some uh, light primer strikes. You know, it was like six or seven of them within the first 50 or 60 rounds, and then all of that went away. And I was so, dude, I was so anxious about it because I'm like, man, how could I have gotten the GX4, which was so reliable, and this one consistently? I mean, even in my first shots short that I did, you know, I had a light primer strike, and I'm like, oh, God, here we go. But it cleared itself out. Typically, I don't, you know, really worry about things within a first 100 rounds, but if I do have issues within 100 rounds, I then won't carry it until I've put 250 or 300 rounds through it and know that those things have actually worked themselves out. At this point, I think they have because we put enough rounds through it because we actually did some comparisons, you know, here as well that will be coming up on the channel here soon. 
So overall, after we got past that first 50 rounds roughly, we were in the clear as far as any kind of issues. Let me show you the trigger. You basically have you know a flat face trigger. They got the little safety dingus right there. You get to the wall and it breaks. It's not super light, but it's predictable. Reset, right there. Very little travel, which leads to very little guesswork. And the nice thing about it is every time I miss a shot, I know exactly what I did. Yeah, this is a good one. And I did notice whenever I would pull this from low ready, and when I say this, you always have to do some kind of adjustment to get your sight on target. And it's not like, the Glock grip angle where I'm doing more adjustment than what's necessary. I'm kind of over exaggerating this by the way. Uh, but it was somewhere in between like, you know, a Spectre comp or a shield plus that has a really good point of aim and the Glock, which I I'm not a fan of. So it was somewhere in between there where I had to do a little bit more adjustment than something like a shield plus but not as much adjustment as I did on the Glock 43X. So it was, it was kind of interesting. It's one of those guns that will obviously benefit from some kind of optic on top. But overall, man, I mean, we were hitting these shots and I told my buddy Mike, I don't know if I told him this on camera, I hope I did, but we shot this gun, we did the Shield Plus Performance Center, and we did the Spectra Comp, right? So we have three different guns that, like I said, that review will be coming soon, and all three of them fit a budget that almost anybody can afford, right? To the super high end, to the lower end. And when I told him how much I paid for this thing, he was like, are you serious? Because he loves the Spectra Comp. And so do I. I mean, I've been carrying it between that and the Performance Center Shield Plus, but it's just expensive. And so when I told him that, I think his, uh, I think his ears perked up there. Under $400 is what I paid for this gun, shipped to my FFL, obviously. Pay a transfer fee, minimal, boom, there we go. So it's really hard to beat that for the money. And that's one reason that I've, you know, talked so highly about Taurus and, you know, here over the past few years, starting with their G2C and then the G3 I got and then the GX4, they've been on a good run. And so uh, this one is no exception. I mean, if I were to say anything about it as far as a negative, I kind of wish they would have put a rail there. Again, this doesn't really affect me as much, but if this is your only gun, you have your holster, let's say, and it doesn't accommodate that particular light or laser setup, that's fine. But if this is your only gun, you carry it throughout the day, you get home, you pop a light on there, boom, you can use it as your home defense as well. I just like having that ability to do that. And I would honestly say a little bit better sight setup. You know, I wish they would have went with some kind of night sight here or better yet, a fiber optic mixed with the night sight. I understand they're trying to keep costs low. So so I do get that. And so it's it, to some extent, it's kind of a moot point because I wouldn't want the price to go up from there because it's at such an affordable option. But again, it's something, you know, I would personally change on this gun. One thing about it is the way it takes down. So you have this little pin right here. You turn this counterclockwise. Pull the trigger. Boom, it comes off. Check out those rails, dude. Almost a full length rail on, on the right side. Nearly a full length rail there. Of course, you have your ejector right there. Sear in the back. I mean, it's all high quality, dual captive recoil spring. It's a steel guide rod at that. It just... They're doing good things. And again, that's why I kind of retracted my uh, my statement on the sights because I'd rather see higher grade internals and eventually down the line, just change your sights out. Right now, besides the couple of issues we had early on, there is not a lot of negatives on this gun. They did this thing right. And you could say, oh man, they copied the Shield Plus and the you know Performance Center version of that, or they copied the 
SIG with the P365 and then the XL. Or the X, I think they call it the X. I, the one I got originally back in the day, it was the XL. But regardless, yeah, they did. But you get some benefits from that. And this is one of the better shooting guns when it comes to these micro guns that I actually have. And I still continue to be impressed with the new guns, new striker fire guns that Taurus is putting out. And this one is absolutely no exception, especially for the money. If there's one other little negative thing I would say is I'd like to see more of an undercut under the trigger guard. I just think it would help you choke up on the gun just a little bit better. But again, at the end of the day, the shooting kind of speaks for itself. This gun did a fantastic job. I'd love to hear your opinion on it. Is the GX4 XL something you would be willing to upgrade to? Uh, again, under 400 bucks, I think it's one of the best values out there for concealed carry, giving you a little bit longer sight radius and a little better velocity as well. Love to hear your opinions down below. If you like this video, maybe you'll like the recent video I did on the original GX4. Big thanks to you guys. See you in the next one. And as always, holding down.